Hey, Glenn, how you doing, man? Yeah, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, what's it like for you uh, in these first few preseason games and obviously getting last night and Thursday against a, a former team? That's got to be pretty fun for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's always exciting to, to play former teams that you've been on. Um, actually in the locker room, messing around with HB, just getting, giving his thoughts about how he uh, goes against the Warriors. So, um, you know, I think the first couple preseason games has been exciting. It's been fun. Um, you know, some similarities to the Warriors, uh, obviously being with Luke, um, you know, my teammates, uh, getting the young guys involved, um, just, just getting a feel of, of the game and how we play here. Um, and I'm pretty excited for the season. When, when you come to a situation where a team wants to push the pace like they do, um, how fun is that? Uh, for what you do and what you provide on the basketball floor? Yeah, I think I'm uh, probably more happy than anybody that, to see a team like this, to see uh, the pace that we play and run at. Um, I mean, by the time I, I turn around, Corey, Joe, De'Aaron, Ty, I mean, they, they, they find guys and they find me in the corners as soon as I, I turn around. So we want to push the ball, get the ball up in like three, four seconds. Um, and playing with guys like that, we're going to get it done every time. And uh, we look to share the ball. And like I said, it's been fun. And I think we're only the sky's the limit for that. I mean, it's hard to play teams who run like that, teams who push the pace um, coming from a team who had to guard this this system. Um, it's tough. And, and if we're running like that consistently every day, every night, um, hopefully we get some wins out of that. All right. We'll go to James Ham. Hey, Glenn, how are you? Good. Thank you. Good. Hey, uh, how strange is it that we're still doing this this like still, you don't get to know any any of us uh we don't get to know you any better than you know just through the computer screen but I mean is there gonna be a point where this gets a little more comfortable for you yeah I mean I think it is what it is I, I try to take everything one day at a time now especially with COVID with with all the you know current situations and I mean we we wake up in the morning we got to take a rapid test and wait 45 minutes in order to practice and be together. And that's every day, you know? So I think it's a season where it's just weird. Um, we're gonna have to suck it up, just get through a lot of difficult things off the court um, dealing with COVID. But I think it just gives us even more of a chance to kind of pull together, um, tie down together and really create that chemistry and what we need to move forward and, and win some games and make the playoffs. We'll go to Marshall Harris. Hey Glenn, how you doing? Good, thank you. Uh, question, you just talked about kind of building that chemistry. Uh, you guys have had a, certainly a shortened uh, preseason training camp. Everything uh, has been kind of condensed down. How long realistically do you think it'll take for this team to kind of hit its stride? I know you just got Marvin and, and Hassan back playing. I mean, how, how long do you think it'll take and, and how much does that hurt your team? How much of a detriment? Yeah, um, I mean, I think from my experience, it usually takes probably – 15, 20 games for everybody to feel completely comfortable, chemistry clicking down. Um, I, it helps getting these preseason games out the way. And it was fun uh, to see Hassan and Marv on a, on a court last night. You know, we were going to need those guys. Um, obviously, two great players. Uh, they both bring a lot of energy uh, to not only the game, but our team. Um, and I thought that I seen that last night, especially Hassan. I mean, some of the stuff that he does, we all laugh at, but it brings a different type of energy and, and just vibe to the game. And I think he gets the, not only the crowd, there's no crowd here uh, now, but not only the crowd, but our players, he gets our players, our team um, together, you know, and that's what we need. And I think that's part of the chemistry piece. We were glad to have those two back last night. How, how cognizant are you and your teammates of the, the way sports has gone other places outside the bubble in terms of maybe not having guys for stretches at a time? And, and how do you think you'll deal with that personally and, and as a team, and I guess every team in the NBA right now, kind of dealing with the possibility that guys are gone? Yeah, I mean, I think that we just got to take it one day at a time. Like I said, um, guys are probably going to get this. Guys um, might miss some time. Um, but that, that's going to create even more opportunity for everybody to step up. Um, these type of things happen all the time anyways, you know, as far as injuries and different situations that happen. Um, when I was a rookie, as I was coming up through the league, I mean, guys always tell you to stay ready for a reason. In this league, um, somebody just might not be hitting shots. Somebody might get injured. Uh, you never know. So I'm constantly telling everybody we're all sticking together. We're all learning on the same page. Everybody needs to know the plays. Everybody has to be in shape. Um, and be ready when your opportunity is called. Because I really believe this year, out of any years, like everybody will get a chance, will get an opportunity because of the circumstances. Jason Jones. Hey, how you doing, Glenn? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, 
talked about the offense earlier and just kind of how things are going so fast. Just in terms of the spacing, how much discipline does it take in practice when you're on that break to, to decide, do I go to the corner? Do I go to the basket? How do you kind of go through the process of deciding what you want to do in those situations? Yeah, I think um, one, it just depends on who you're playing with. Obviously, uh, De'Aaron got the ball. We need to get to the corners and we need to have that space and give him alleys to work. Um, that's what he's great at. Uh, with Corey Joe, I know that he also wants to advance the ball. So kind of get into those wing to corner positions. But no matter what, I think we have a great team for spacing. Um, that spacing will allow us to get downhill and knock down some threes. We've got a lot of guys who can shoot, a lot of guys who can get to the rim. Got some big men who can finish. Um, so it's just about creating um, lanes for each other, creating space and opportunity. Um, like I said, the way that we run, the pace that we play at, it's hard to guard. Like no one wants to guard that every night for 48 minutes. And you talked about the kind of the energy Hassan brings. And, you know, sometimes it, it, it'll, it'll make you laugh, but it's good energy. Just <laughs> what are some uh, twofold? What are some of those things? And secondly, just what does it do for a group when you see a, a, like last night guys driving into the lane and they're throwing the ball out of bounds? rather than try to shoot over him and just it's kind yeah. of just the way he can change a game <laughs> uh two things i mean i told Hassan on the bench he was sitting next to me last night i said i've tried to dunk on you one time and one time only and that's on purpose because <laughs> you go in there and you see that guy i mean he said it's hard to, it's hard to dunk through 280 he's 280 <laughs> arms are long i mean nobody wants to go up against that and then the second thing, I mean, you guys seen it. He hits a floater. He's looking at his hand. He gets the he gets the bench involved. He makes the euro slowest fall I've ever seen in my life. Gets the and one and has the bench excited. And those are the energy plays that we need. Those are the thing that Hassan brings, and I'm excited um, that he's on his team uh, because not only will he block shots, but he creates that energy, creates that spark. It makes you feel good. You know, you, your teammates trust in you. We trust in him. Um, it makes you feel good. And we'll knock down shots and have confidence. If we don't, he's going to get that rebound. So um, you need a guy like that on your team in a locker room. Hassan's a great guy. Tony Harvey. Yeah, Glenn, I have to say um, I enjoy listening to you, you know, talk about the humor that he injects in this team. I'm talking about Hassan Whiteside. Uh, just want to go back a little further when the Kings brought you in. I wasn't able to uh, build this question to you. You know, uh, your bloodline. Your dad played in the NBA. You're playing in the NBA. Your dad played in the Big Ten. You played in the Big Ten. Do you kind of, you know, go back and talk to him and, you know, get his ideas of, you know, how you're playing and, you know, what organization is this? What organization is that? Yeah. What is those basketball discussions like between you and your dad? Yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, I've actually – I wanted to take it to another level in our offseason sometime and actually sit down and have somebody – um, recorded or do it through some type of TV program of, of the conversations that we're able to have. I mean, my dad was number one pick. A lot of people don't know. He, he kind of changed the structure of why rookies get paid the way that they do now. Um, so having those conversations with him, it's been unique. I'm um, a guy who played 12 years, like I said, number one pick, different teams. Um, but obviously he knows a lot of the coaches, a lot of the systems. Um, and having those talks with him, it's been very helpful throughout my career. We have different career paths and, 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 and we're different players. Um, but to really talk to a pro, to talk to an all-star, um, anytime, I, anytime I can is just give him a call. It's been something unique for my career and my situation. Um, so coming here with the Kings, he was excited for me because obviously um, he knows my style of play and I like to run. I like to get up the court and play defense. And I think that it's a, it's a hell of an opportunity for me. And he, and he knows that as well. So um, the talks that we have, like I said, they're special and I'm, uh, the only other guy really that Tim Hardaway, Tim Hardaway, we used to ha talk about how he was, he would talk to his pops too at Michigan. So um, it's been very special for me and I'm very happy about that. And you, and this of course is my last question uh, because your dad, you know, he, he scored at a premium. That was his game, but you mentioned that, you know, you like to run and you like to play defense. Um, what are those discussions are like? Because I know not, not to say he was no defensive player. I mean, he was a, all-star in this yeah. league. Nah, you can say it. he didn't play no defense. <laughs> <laughs> He'll <No>. tell you. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you know, your of course your game is totally different from him. But yeah. what are those talks are like? It's like, Dad, I played better defense than you. What, what, what more can you tell me? Yeah, something? yeah. Nah, I, I actually joke with him about that. I, I say, man, I, I actually play both sides of the court, you know, and, and he laughs. But I think um, the biggest thing is is he gives me advice like. 
off the court. I mean, it's, it's eating, it's, it's sleep, it's rest, uh, how he was able to stay 12 years. Um, the little things to keep you in the league, I think, is what he helps me with. Uh, but obviously, being the effective scorer that he is, um, it's, it's hard for him sometimes when I, I try to talk to him and it's like the game is changing, Pops. Like, they're not shooting as many mid-range as, 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 as you were when you were playing, you know. So uh, it's, it's evolving to a three and D and drive game. Um, so we do have conversations and discussions and even battles like about that sometimes, like debates. Like, all right, do you take this mid-range step back versus the three, you know, in analytics? So um, it's, it's cool to talk to somebody, you know, from that 90s era, from that, from that era where he was playing in. But like I said, the advice that he gives me, I mean, it's not too many people that can, can, can just call up their dad and talk to him and, and have 12 years in the league like that. So I'm very, I'm very blessed and thankful for that. All right, everyone, we're, we have time for just a few more questions. If I could ask you to limit to one question each, that would be greatly appreciated. Jason Anderson. Hey, Glenn, can you hear me okay? I hear you. Yes, sir. Very good. Hey, so you mentioned uh, similarities with what you guys are doing and, and you know, what, what maybe what you saw with the Warriors last year with the connection uh, with Luke and the Warriors. I'm, I'm curious about those similarities. What are the, the things you're noticing that are most alike? Yeah, I've, I've, I've pulled Coach to the side a couple of times. And um, whether that's plays, whether that's action, um, you know, I'm, I'm a type of player where I can – I got a, a high IQ, a feel of the game. So uh, to be able to flare Buddy, to be able to, to screen him and slip, uh, we did a lot of that with the Warriors. The way that we run the floor, um, even a lot of our, our practice plans are similar, I think, on purpose. Um, and talking to him, I mean, I, I think it's just a comfortability thing for me. So, um, like I said, I knew that coming to the Kings, but to actually see it live in action, um, I think that that's, that's important is that you have some type of comfortability with it. Um, and Luke's been open and talking to me and just trying to help me out with my game. And so, so I can help that second unit uh, be the best we can. Kamani. Hi, Glenn. Um... I know it's just preseason, but what does uh, overcoming a situation like last night do for a young team like yours? And uh, have you ever been in a situation like that in your career that you can reflect on? Um, just as far as like last night's game, just it, it getting close, being up. Yeah, and well, Kyle Guy is uh, hitting that shot specifically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know what? What that? I know it's just preseason, but it's it, that's got to do something for the gelling of the team, you know. For sure. For sure. I mean, it, it not only brings that chemistry together, you've seen all of us run on a court and just celebrating because Kyle Guy hit that shot, even though it's preseason. Like that's the type of energy. That's the type of chemistry that we're gaining. Um, our locker rooms, the talks that we have in there. I mean, I'm having some of the most fun in that locker room that I've had in, in, in my seven years. So um, I think that it definitely gets us closer. Um, I think that it's, it's definitely a learning lesson for us, obviously being up. Um, having to come back, uh, we shouldn't even have to get to that point where Kyle hit the shot. But to see everyone, how we reacted, um, it's great. And for the young guys, it gives them an opportunity to really um, just learn from that, to really grow. Um, I love when they get that fourth quarter in the preseason games because you can really see what they're about, um, but also see the aggression level, see how hard they've been working. Um, they're in there playing three on three right now, you know, so we had a, another great day of practice. Um, I, we haven't taken taken one day off. We've, we've continued to strive and um, just try to be the best that we can. So that's what I love about this team is everybody's coming to work every day, um, working hard, whether that's the conditioning test, whether that's getting better watching film. Uh, we're all on the same page and just trying to get connected. So I don't see anybody that's slacking in any areas, and that's what's most exciting about this. Matt George. Hey, Glenn, we've heard so much about the competitiveness of this team just in practice, how everybody's competing for those minutes, but trying to get better and make each other better. How does that compare to the three preseason games that you've played, the game specifically last night? Is is that lev level of competitive competitiveness in practice similar to that of an actual game? Um, I would say, I would say, yeah, I would say our intensity, the way that we bring it when we do go live, um, we want it to be harder than the game. You know, we want to push each other harder than the game. Um, but what I will say is from that first game in Portland to the second game, you could see the tempo that we play at, the, the way that we were trying to push the ball. Um, you know, I know it's preseason, but they were tired that second game. Um, hopefully we can do the same thing tomorrow with the Warriors. Um, have them tired. I mean, they were tired yesterday, yesterday at strides, you know. Um, so we have to continue to push ourselves through those uh, moments where we feel like we're getting tired. But you can see when it when it does work, and when we're when we're playing at our best, like we're playing well. When we're pushing the ball, pushing the tempo, 
we're playing well and it's hard to guard. All right, everyone. Thank you.